So we are continuing exactly from where we left off in the previous lesson. Um, we've just created our peg movie and our B2 body for the peg actor, and now we just need to add the logic that is going to tell the movie what frame to jump to, um, depending on what type of peg we're looking at. Now uh, let's go back to this one little step where we can set what frame the movie is going to be at. I basically wanted to save this to the end so that we can call the costume variable um, within this function. And obviously we can't do that until we've uh, created the constructor. I don't know if this is good programming style. I'm sure somebody out there has, has a better way of doing it. But this worked for me. So uh, I'm just going to do it. And create this function called setMyMovieFrame. And basically this is going to determine what frame the costume should go to based on what type of peg we're at and whether it's been hit or not. And it's basically just some uh, nested if statements. Nothing too fancy. So I'm going to say if peg type is normal. Sorry. We're going to check and see if it's been hit. If it has, we will tell our costume. And actually, I need to cast it as a movie clip because uh, as far as my peg actor is concerned, costume is just a display object. And since it's lit, it's going to go to frame two. And otherwise, we're going to go to and stop at frame one. And uh, I guess at this point we can assume the peg type is goal. I suppose if we want to be uh, super uh, paranoid, we'll check that. And we can say and here we're going to go to frame 4 if it's the goal peg that's been hit. Otherwise And we'll just throw a little error, and uh, I think that should be all set. I'm going to save this and hit Control F6 to make sure that it all runs, even though uh, we haven't created any peg actors yet. Okay, fantastic. Our ball's still in there. Now let's go and uh, create a couple pegs, just to uh, test it out. So now, going back to my main Puggle class, I'm going to create a function called add some pegs. I'm just going to kind of move this to after make ball because that seems like the more logical place to put it. So I'm going to put a few pegs in here. For now, I'm just going to kind of put in some uh, placeholder code. At some point later, we'll probably want to replace this with, you know, like some real pegs. So uh, We'll have peg1, which is a peg actor, can be a new peg actor. We'll have the parent be the Puggle application for now. We'll have it at, all right, so I'm going to try and put this somewhere where I think maybe my ball will collide with it. So we'll put one at, say, 230, comma 30. And our type can be peg actor dot normal. And we'll put this at 260. We'll have this one be a goal peg. And this one will move a little further. And now if I run this, this will actually work. And we can take a look at that and see. Okay, that's great. But there are a couple of things that are wrong with it. First is that, well, I guess I didn't quite uh, figure out 
where they were, where they should be exactly. So let's move these down a little bit. Hopefully uh, my, my ball will collide with one of these pegs. The other thing is that you'll notice I am not calling the update now function in my frame listener for these peg actors. Now it so happens these are static objects and it will work okay. But at some point, if I create any kind of game logic code in my update now or in my child specific updating function in the peg actor, several hours later, I'm going to suddenly be mystified when I notice they're not updating. So uh, probably the best thing to do would be to store these in an array and make sure I call them um, during my new frame listener. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a little var called peg actors, and that's an array. I'll make sure here that we initialize it. And then during my add some pegs function, I will make sure that it now equals peg one, peg two, and peg three. Finally, within my new frame listener, I can say for each bar I can uh, call the update now function on each of those peg actors. I'm sure that you are already noticing that things are starting to look a little messy here. I have my ball actor as one variable, then I've got my peg actors in an array, and clearly the thing to do would be to combine all of this probably into one giant array of actors, and we will be doing that. But for now, we'll just put this in because this works and I don't want to refactor too much. So I'm going to hit F6 again. Hey, look at that. The ball collided with one of our pegs. Just for fun, I'm going to move them over a little bit. See if maybe we can get it to bounce off a couple. Hey, fantastic. In fact, apparently they're a little too close together because now my ball is stuck. Not only that, but you may have noticed that our pegs are not actually uh, lighting up when the ball hits them. And that's because we haven't put in any logic to do that. So it seems like the three things we need to tackle next are, number one, let's be a little smarter about how we add actors into our main class. Number two, let's uh, try and actually add a realistic grid of pegs. And then number three, let's see if we can get our pegs to light up when the ball hits them, because I think that would probably make things a little more exciting. And we'll be doing all of that very shortly.